Poppy Playtime is a horror game that features various puzzles and spooky sentient toys. But you already know this. Within just two chapters as of making this video, the game has become widely known all over the globe, with things branching off the game like merchandise, animations, and uh, NFTs. Uh, oh god. However, a thing you might not know about this infamous horror title is the many games on the App Store that try to replicate its success. So this week, I want to play some of the many clones that Poppy Playtime has seemed to create. So without further ado, let's take a look at some Poppy Playtime clones. So the first game we'll be playing is Escape Evil Playtime Chapter 2. So not even in the game, and I'm already a bit confused about what this game is trying to tell me. Reading the description, it states that classic hide and seek game. Play as a seeker or hideout and win the game. You can run perfectly in the house, but be careful and try not to run into cumbersome things. Okay, so it's very clear that this guy is not from an English speaking country. Even more confusing is the task that it tries to explain, as the task is to collect objects before you are anyone else. Yeah, I totally know what that means. So loading into the menu, it gives us two options to choose, being Huggy as the father and just a generic baby. Uh, who the hell is the mother in this situation? Spawning into the game, the main objective now is to collect dangerous things. So the lore in this game is that the baby wants to kill himself, and Huggy needs to stop the baby from doing that. Now, I don't know why there are screwdrivers and hammers all over the place, but whatever. So a huge problem that this game has is the abundance of ads everywhere. This game makes you play ads every 5 seconds during gameplay. And I'm not joking about that. You could just be minding your own business walking around until you suddenly get some crappy Poppy Playtime FNF mod. Wow, I really want to play the official Poopy Playtime Friday Night Funking mod. The reviews of this game also seem to think the same way, with half the reviews just talking about how obnoxious the hundreds of ads were. Now, this wouldn't be a problem, which it is regardless, if the game was paused during the ads. But no, once an ad pops in the game, it continues to run in the background, meaning that by the time the ad is over, you have already lost the game. So yeah, this game is unplayable. Not only do ads play during gameplay every 5 seconds, but it makes it unplayable as the enemy can just win while you're watching it. And also, this game concept is just ripped from Who's Your Daddy, a game where you also play as a baby and father and collect as many dangerous things as you possibly can. Even the map's layout is just the same as Who's Your Daddy. This game is just two huge ripoffs combined, with random FNF ads playing out of nowhere. Looking at the App Store, this game has about 56 ratings that rounds up to a 3.4. Other than the crappy ads and the weird lore that happens in this game, there's not really too much else to say about this game, as all you do is collect objects. That's it. I mean, this game might have been better if it, you know, actually let me play the game. But yeah, that's about it for this title. So let's just move on. So the next game we'll be playing is Factory Toy Horror. And oh god, look at the monster. So basically, the premise of this game is the exact same as Poppy Playtime where you're in a chamber for kids and go around solving puzzles. Scrolling down, the description says, you are in a scary toy factory. Try to get out of this factory when a scary toy is chasing you. Wow. So not even out of the first area, and there's already a huge problem with the game. And that is the puzzles are really frustrating. Our first objective upon spawning in is to find a cassette for this radio. Okay, cool, pretty ordinary puzzle, but where's the cassette? In this room, there is the main lobby, a room to the right off of it that has a keypad, a room to the left that is just a store, and going forward reveals a locked door. So obviously the cassette will probably be in the store, right? Nope, I checked everywhere. There is no sign of the said cassette. Okay, maybe the keypad no. Not in there. The locked door of the lobby? No. I might very well just be the blindest toy factory player ever, but I spent a good 10 minutes trying to find this dang cassette. And the worst part is you don't even need to collect it anyways, since it was optional. The main puzzle actually is trying to figure out what the code is on this keypad, which the numbers are replaced with colors. And again, how am I supposed to figure this out? The closest thing I could seem to find accessing the keypad were these tile colors on the floor. But even then, there were too many of them and they had repeating colors. So you wanna know how I solved this code? I guessed it. Miraculously, I got the code to work and I proceeded to go inside, to which it harbors a syringe. Okay, so our first instinct when collecting a syringe is to stab it in our arm. Good job? Well, it's whatever, because upon ejecting the syringe, your hand turns blue and now you have the equivalent of the hands in Poppy Playtime. So our hands are kind of strange. Instead of it being more closely related to the Poppy Playtime hands, it's more like the physics gun in Gary's mod where upon grabbing it, gravity won't pull it down, and in general, it kind of looks like the physics gun. So now our main objective is to go around doing random things. The player turns off the power, puts a random beam inside another beam, you know the rest. 
Oh man, I sure hope the spooky purple basketball player didn't disappear. Oh no! It disappeared! Who would have guessed? So, another problem that this game has is tending to softlock me every once in a while. Like, for example, you have to complete the beam puzzle to unlock a door, but for whatever reason, one of the times the door is still locked. And also, there are no checkpoints or autosave in this game. When I had to fix the softlock, I had to do all the puzzles leading up to that point again, which wasn't fun at all. Anyways, after going through this door and going into the hallway of the void, I encountered poopy playtime! Oh no! Okay, bye. Hang on, what, is he still there? Oh, he is. <laughs> Welp, the game just reset everything once again. Screw this game. Let's just go on to the next one. The third game we'll be playing is Evil Plus Toy Horror. Looking at the App Store, this game has about 67 ratings that rounds up to a 3.7, with the reviews being fairly positive about the game. And the description reads, You are being chased by a scary plush toy. Can you survive? So with that all out of the way, let's begin the game. So Evil Plush Toy Horror starts you in a supermarket, but 5 seconds later, the lights turn off and a spooky TV could be heard from the corner. Turning it on, a bear appears as it plays a text to speech voice saying it will help you if you collect other bears. So remember how I said in the previous game where it was really hard to find a singular cassette? Yeah, this game is pretty much like that, except now the room is even bigger, you have to find three of them, and there is a spooky monster. The monster being yet again another crappy purple toy thing. So the monster's AI in this game is really stupid. Once it spots you, it runs very slowly, and by the time you get 10 feet away from it, it will forget you exist. It also doesn't have a very good awareness. You could be practically right next to it, and it still won't see you. Another problem this game has is being able to get stuck in a lot of places. Like, for example, I managed to somehow get myself stuck in between these shelves, as well as this pole right here. There's also the ramp on the shelf right here that, if you precisely time, you can get up. Now, I was able to find two out of the three bears, but I swear to god, it took me half an hour just looking around this huge map to find the last bear, and I couldn't find it. The problem is that they don't tend to glow up when placed around the environment. They are dark and tend to camouflage very easily, and it's not like you can freely roam this area since the blind monster with dementia kind of exists. And even if I were to find the three bears, there's also another objective on top of that where I need to find a key, which one of the reviews also seems to have trouble finding. So yeah, there was probably a lot more to this game, but I'd rather not waste another hour of my life playing this crappy title. But again, I might be just as blind as the monster itself, but let's just move on. The next game we'll be playing is Scary Battle Music. Yes, I'm reviewing an FNF mod. What are you gonna do about it? What's up, guys? Sournail Gamer 32 YT here, and welcome back to another FNF mod. Oh my God! I get to play as Poopy Playtime and the pink one. Oh my God! Which song should I play, guys? Make sure to leave a comment down below. All right, let's go with the father goose crap. Here we go, let's start the song. What? I'm already playing your game. Here we go. This game sucks. And now we are at the end of this video. So in conclusion, Poppy Playtime clones are not that good. Who would have guessed? I know making trendy videos like this are a bit of a gamble, as really Poppy Playtime is just like another Among Us or FNF, in the sense that it's all hyped and popular now, but in the months following, no one will really talk about this game anymore. But I figure I make this video right now, since one, I'm out of ideas, and two, it's best to make a trendy video when the games are at its peak. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you sometime in the future. Goodbye. Damn. OST kinda slapping though.